Hi everybody, Val Mosier here from Merker Mountain Science Center. Today we're going to explore some chemical changes and chemical properties. Now we're going to start out with something everybody's familiar with, and I'm going to light this candle, which is actually a chemical reaction. We need three things for a fire to occur. We need heat, which I got from my lighter. We need fuel, which is the wax from the candle, and we need something else. Any guesses? Comes from the in, in the air. It's in our air. If you said oxygen, you're right. So that's our fire triangle, heat, fuel, and oxygen. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a special chemical. It's called lycopodium powder. I'm going to take it through our flame. Let's see if we observe a chemical change. Ooh, definitely. All right, we saw the production of light and I can feel the heat. I know you guys aren't in the room right now, but I can definitely smell something as well. Now. We've made a fire. I'm kind of interested in what we can do a little different with a different substance to maybe do something different with the fire. So I have this substance, which you guys may be familiar with. This is called dry ice, and it is frozen or solid carbon dioxide. Um, that means it's a gas that's been frozen. If you observe, you can see the gas is falling from the dry ice. That means it's heavier or more dense than air. Now, what we're gonna do is use that property to fill my tank with carbon dioxide. Before we started, I put some dry ice in our beaker there, and we filled this whole tank with carbon dioxide. Now, you can't quite see it, but um, let's test it. So, we're gonna take a different candle on my little holder here, and we're gonna drop it down into our tank of carbon dioxide. Let's observe what happens. Now, you guys make a prediction. What do you think will happen? All right, our flame went out. Now, we're missing something from our fire triangle. Our carbon dioxide displaced or pushed out all the oxygen, so we did not have that reactant um, for our reaction to occur. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take a slightly different substance, and this stuff is called magnesium. It is a metal, um, it's fairly reactive, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to light it on fire. Now we know we need three things for a fire. We need heat, fuel, and oxygen. This is our fuel, oxygen from the air. I'm gonna use heat from something a little different this time because I need a lot of heat to get this started. Now, when I put it in here, right, it's carbon dioxide, it should go out. You guys make a prediction about what'll happen. All right, so it's lighting. Now notice how it's not stopping. It's continuing to burn. Okay, and it's even, oh my gosh, it's even starting to burn brighter. And you can see the gas coming off. That gas is magnesium oxide. It's still burning, even though this is full carbon dioxide. All right, we're gonna let that finish. We're gonna let all those reactants finish the reaction. And then I'm gonna reach in here and let's take a closer look. Now you see there's sort of a gas here. This is. Uh, magnesium oxide. So we made a new gas and I'm going to move some of this sort of white magnesium around um, and you'll notice that there is some black substance there. Well that's carbon. So we stripped the oxygen out of the carbon dioxide and we are left with carbon here and we saw our gas, our magnesium oxide. Awesome guys. So very cool unexpected chemical reaction. Think about that and um, explore chemicals and chemical properties outside of here. We hope to see you back. Thanks.